and a Baby. Hello, welcome to Bourbon and a Baby. My name is Jay. Max is not going to be joining us today because as much as I would like to share some great Ohio bourbons with him, he's just a little bit too young to do that with yet. Today's video comes from a suggestion by The Bourbon Van, Phil and Julie. Uh, if you've never checked out their channel, please do so. They are putting up some great content. But they had this idea of getting uh, whiskey tubers in different states to say kind of what are the best bourbons available in their specific state. And the I think the goal and the idea is to hopefully get all 50 states covered at some point. Um, so they have a playlist on their channel where they are putting all these videos together that, that they have done and other whiskey tubers have done as well. Um, and there's some great videos, so please check out that playlist. I will link that playlist at the end as well. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to cover bourbons from my great state of Ohio. So this is the five best whiskeys in Ohio. And the idea here about these uh, whiskeys from Ohio um, is I'm going to tell you my favorite whiskeys that are currently coming out in Ohio. Most of them are bourbons, uh, but you know, this is bourbon and baby, right? Um, and the cool thing about Ohio whiskeys and bourbons uh, in particular is that if you would have, if I would have made this list like four years ago, five years ago, uh, I would have been, I would have, it would have been a struggle for me to pick five. Uh, there was like maybe one <laughs> that, that I would have like felt confident to recommend um, of, of the ones that, I, that I've had. Um, there are certainly some out there that I haven't had a chance to try yet. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. But now Ohio is really, really, really starting to get its, its distilling together and, and putting out some great product. And I'm really proud to promote uh, Ohio whiskeys here on this channel. In fact, I have my own playlist called Drink Ohio Bourbon. Uh, so please check that out as well. Okay, so first up, if you're traveling through Ohio and you want to uh, have an idea of what are some uh, some whiskeys you should pick up, I'm gonna start. Uh, I do kind of have these ranked in order, um, from kind of my like my least favorite to my favorite. Uh, so I'm gonna start with number five, and I also there are some distilleries in Ohio that are sourcing uh, some some great whiskey and putting out some great sourced uh, whiskeys. Uh, and I wanted to stay away from those with one exception, and I'll, I'll explain that when I get there. So these are all, except for one, uh, <laughs> these are all distilleries that are putting out their own product. And I really wanted to focus on that here, again, with one exception. So our first stop along the state of Ohio is going to take us to New Carlisle, Ohio, which is just a tad northeast of Dayton, Ohio. Um, and that is Indian Creek Distillery. Okay, we're going to drive our little bourbon van to New Carlisle, Ohio, just northeast of Dayton, which on my weatherman map would be right about there. And I don't actually have a bottle of this one, so I'm gonna make one magically appear right here. Uh, but they put out a couple different, um, a few different whiskeys and bourbons. Uh, but the one I picked from them is called Seven Staley's. And Seven Staley's is a bourbon, and it is actually a very interesting 95% corn bourbon. So yeah, it's a 95% corn bourbon, uh, which is a bit unusual. They don't tell us the rest of that mash bill. Um, and I've only had a chance to sample this once and I was really blown away by it and I thought it was delicious. That's why I made this list even though I don't currently have a bottle. Um, and they don't have huge distribution, at least not in my area of Ohio. Um, so I haven't been able to buy one on the shelf. Um, but next time I'm in that area, I'm definitely going to stop into the distillery and buy a bottle because it was so, so, so good. So. Um, I remember it being just really sweet, uh, that 95% corn, and really just smooth and easy to drink, and it just really went down great. So I'm gonna read, since I, I can't fully remember everything I loved about this bourbon, I'm gonna read a little bit of their description uh, from their website um, to, to talk about it. So uh, it says, a drink for contemplating. This nostalgic whiskey achieves the alchemy of history and a sense of, of place to exist in a bottle. 200 years lives here, allowing the imbiber to see into dimensions that are now forgotten with its rich color of dark amber and lingering mellow warmth. 
uh, with notes that are like a woodsy fall day. It's a beautiful combination of crisp and clean, dark caramel and magic, uh, where the past lives in every bottle. Just like easing into your favorite leather chair, this comfortable bourbon takes you back to a place of myth and memories. So, um, yeah, a funny description there. Uh, obviously, uh, taking a little bit of creative license there, but it is kind of true to form to what I remember. I remember it being really sweet. I remember it being really comfortable and easy to drink, and I just remember like really enjoying it. So it's one that I think that you could just sit out on like a nice fall, even a summer day, because I remember it being relatively like um, smooth and just kind of went down really easy. One that you could just kind of sit on your porch and, and just kind of enjoy uh, as, as the day goes on. Okay, our next stop, we're gonna take our bourbon van to uh, Columbus, Ohio, where we're gonna stay for a while because um, I think all of the rest of these are from Columbus. Now, we head up to Columbus. There. <laughs> but, um, we're gonna go to Watershed Distillery, and Watershed has really been putting out a lot of really good products lately. Uh, in fact, when they, again, when I mentioned like four or five years ago, if you would have tried um, a, a lot of stuff, Watershed was one that I just didn't like uh, about five years ago when they were first putting out um, their, their younger stuff. Um, but now, what's been coming out of Watershed has been really great, and Watershed has brought in um, Aaron Harris as their master distiller. Um, he previously came from Bartstown Bourbon Company and I believe uh, maybe Barton's before that even. So this is a guy with a lot of experience and, and, and he's, I feel like he's really steered the ship in the right direction and, and they, they've just really been, again, cranking out some great product. The one I've chose for this list is their Barrel Strength Bourbon finished in apple brandy casks. Um, this is 128 point 120.8 proof um, this particular bottle is batch number two um, it's six years old and it is I so kind of funny that I would pick this for my list and want to have this bottle because I personally don't like apples <laughs> so I really when I've tried this for the first time thought Oh man, I'm not gonna like it. It's gonna be too apple-y for me, and it really isn't. Uh, there is kind of this kind of apple undertone to it, but oh my gosh, it's just so good. It's really complex, uh, and again, it's 120.8 proof, so uh, it, it packs a little bit of heat. And this one in particular, I found um, when I first poured it, and you know, kind of smelled it and took a sip. Um, it just really hit me heavy. So I let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then when I came, we kind of let it open up in the glass. And when I came back to it, it was so different. And I, I just really, really, really loved it. Uh, so good. Um, I, I remember it being kind of, uh, <sighs> kind of soft, a little bit nutty. Um, but then like it just packs like this kind of, heat and this punch that is just fun and exciting and it's one that you could just kind of almost like uh, one that you'd want to sit around uh, if you if you had some buddies that are um, into bourbon uh, one that you'd like to kind of all sit around <laughs> like I, I imagine sitting around a round table and, and just everybody kind of throwing out kind of what they're getting uh, it was a little bit spicy uh, a little bit nutty uh, and then uh, obviously real fruity uh, with, with those apple undertones to it. Um, just a really, really good and fun uh, bourbon. Now, this is a limited release, this in particular. So, you know, if you go to their sh their bottle shop, chances are they, they might have it there. Um, but they also have a, a four-year-old bottled and bond uh, that, that they've recently released within the last, I'd say, year. Um, that's also really good. So if you have to settle for that in place of this, uh, it's a good settle. Trust me, it's really, really good. So, so check out Watershed. Welcome guys, my name is Aaron Harris, head distiller for Watershed Distillery. Uh, you can find 
uh, most of our products in the state of Ohio and seven other states. Uh, I believe it's Florida, Georgia, uh, Michigan, Illinois, I believe New York, Washington, D.C. Uh, right now we have for sample here our six-year barrel strength bourbon. It is our four-year original five-grain recipe. For two years in an apple brandy cast. Uh, it's a limited release. We're sharing that today, and then we're actually selling it in our pop up whiskey, uh, OHLQ uh, pop up store. We also have our watershed bottle and bond, which is uh, our first our first uh, release came out in July. Uh, it is a uh, we're very proud of it. It's doing really well. Uh, our other bourbons coming out right now. We have our uh, blended bourbon. That is uh, a blend of source bourbon, our four-year uh, watershed bourbon. Also, uh, we put an apple brandy cask in there as well. Uh, we, we love it. It's been received very well, and uh, we hope you all try it very soon. Uh, what's the what's that five grain mash bill? So the original five grain rest mash bill consisted of corn, wheat, rye, and spelt in the mall. So that was a nod to traditional distilling in Ohio. Uh, spelt's growing up here very, very well. So um, we have since refined that recipe. About five years ago, they switched to a standard recipe, which is a 72217 mash bill. How are we doing, guys? It's kind of a mid one. All right, coming in at number three, or in the third, in the third spot in our list, is Middle West Spirits. We're, sti we're sticking in Columbus. We're not very far from Watershed. Uh, uh, fairly close, maybe about uh, 10 minute drive tops. Um, but uh, Middle West Spirits is killing it and they've been killing it since day one. Um, this was the one that I said four or five years ago if you would have asked me uh, <laughs> uh, what I would recommend. This would have been the one that I would have recommended. So um, this one in particular is their weeded bourbon, their, their straight weeded bourbon. It's actually a four grain mash bill. It has um, uh, dark pumper, pumpernickel rye, corn, uh, soft red winter wheat from my hometown of Fostoria, Ohio, and, um, and malted barley as well. So it's, it's kind of really an interesting, different kind of take on, on a weeded bourbon. Um, uh, you don't see a ton of four grains out there. Uh, and this one is just really, really, really good. It's a really solid bourbon. I recommend this a lot. I work in a bourbon bar. I recommend this to people a lot, and I've never um, recommended this some, to somebody, and then they were like, well, why did you throw this at me? This is terrible. <laughs> Everybody's always really enjoyed it, um, and, and, and has kind of thanked me for that recommendation. Uh, I've known a few people that have gone out and bought themselves several bottles uh, as well. So uh, definitely recommend Middle West Spirit. They're, um, straight weeded bourbon whiskey. They also have a wheat whiskey that uh, looks just really similar to this. Uh, I've recently done a review of that. Uh, that's really good as well. And they have their um, rye whiskey, their dark pumper, pumpernickel rye whiskey, that's also fantastic. So you can't go wrong with Middle West Spirits. And even though this is supposed to be uh, our top five whiskeys from, uh, from our state, the state of Ohio, uh, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a detour and I want to tell you the best RTD, ready to drink cocktail, that you can get that's made here in Ohio. And that is coming out of Cincinnati, Ohio. So we're going to head down south, go to Cincinnati for a minute. We're going to detour down to Cincinnati. There. Uh, this is from Carrick and Spirits. This is Bourbon Wheel. It's a bourbon lemonade. 7.5% uh, alcohol. I've been drinking this recently uh, as the weather has gotten nice here in Ohio. And it is really good. Um, it's a little dangerous because it's so easy to drink. Um, it is great to drink. Uh, I was in the pool last weekend uh, uh, and it is a drink, great pool drink. Um, I was up on Sandusky Bay uh, and just great sitting by the water drinking this. So this is also a drink, uh, a can that I would want to take out um, if I'm cabrewing down the Hocking River here in Ohio or I'm floating in an inner tube down the Mohican River. Uh, this is going to be 
in my cooler on that trip and I'm going to be drinking this, these floating down the river. So uh, Bourbon Wheel from Carrick and Spirits, you, uh, great job Cincinnati, Ohio. And one quick other detour I want to take. Uh, I try not to have too much negativity on this channel, uh, but I also want to be honest. Uh, one of the biggest distilleries or kind of most known and most distributed distilleries in Ohio is called Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland, you say? Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland Whiskey, um, this in particular is their Christmas bourbon. This is not on my list of the five best bourbons in Ohio. In fact, this is one that I would tell, uh, tell most people to avoid, um, as well as their Cleveland Black Reserve. Um, the Christmas bourbon in particular, um, if, unless you really like flavored whiskeys, uh, stay away but I will tell you this I'm gonna give you a little bit of props here Cleveland um, if you like eggnog you know, around the holiday season I found the place for this for this whiskey and it's mixing this in eggnog it actually goes really well uh, and that's the only reason why I've gotten as far down the bottle as I have is because I was mixing it in eggnog this past Christmas season so it is good for that um, the rest of their products especially the Cleveland Black Reserve avoid um they do have their underground series which i have not tried yet and i have heard positive reviews of so take that for what you will but for me i'm gonna stay out of cleveland uh, so i'm gonna avoid cleveland whiskey sorry okay back to the list coming in at number two we're back in columbus ohio again not too far from watershed and middle west spirits uh, we're going to go to High Bank, uh, and that, High Bank just actually opened a second location in Johanna, which uh, is, is just a, also a different part of Columbus. Um, but if you're in downtown Columbus, go to High Bank Distillery, they have great food there, and they also have great whiskey. Now this is the asterisk though, uh, I said I wasn't going to, um, I was going to try not to uh, do source bourbon uh, or source whiskey. This is source, but this is their Whiskey War Barrel Proof. Whiskey War Barrel Proof. Again, it's sourced, but let me tell you, it is so good. So, so good. Uh, this particular bottle, 116.5 proof. Um, and it's just, they, um, Adam Hines and his team at High Bank have just been knocking it out of the park. They are distilling their own uh, product. Uh, the, uh, they're, they're making their own. Uh, it's just not ready yet. Uh, I think last, I, last time I heard, uh, it's getting close, but it's not there yet. Um, I think they're just about to approach uh, that four year mark as, well, as far as having uh, their stuff aging. Um, so I'm really curious to see how that is because I have, based on what they're doing with sourcing and blending, I have full confidence in in their team there. Um, and it, this is just so, so good. If, if you get the Whiskey Warp Barrel Proof, uh, you see it on the shelf, buy, buy, buy. It's so worth it. Uh, it's won um, uh, Best of Class at the San, San Francisco World Spirits Competition in 2021 and I think just recently in 2022 they've won a bunch of awards as well. Um, they're, they're, they know what they're doing. They're, it's it's really good. Um, it's everything you want out of just a barrel proof whiskey. I'm Adam Hines, I'm one of the owners of High Bank. I'm the master distiller here. We made the best blended whiskey in America according to the San Francisco Spirits Competition, which is the largest in the United States. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. We'd love for people to check us out. We have our regular whiskey war, our barrel proof, which is what won the award. We have a midnight cast, and then we have some special releases uh, that uh, you guys can keep an eye out for. Those will be coming out in November, December. We have some uh, wine cast releases. Um, yeah, located in Grandview, Ohio, uh, just outside of Columbus. So, we'd love for people to come check us out. Highbankco.com. <laughs> so yeah, it's, we we source three different mash bills to come up with a blend uh, of what whiskey war is. While we are, so we've been around for just over three years, um, and so the bourbon that we make every week, that we produce every week, is uh, still aging. So I'm not a fan of baby bourbons. I, even though you're 
bourbon and baby podcast. I'm a fan of babies. I have three of them, just not baby bourbons. Um, so we, uh, uh, our bourbon right now is at just past three years old. It's not out yet. So we're going to wait till four, and then we're going to release our bourbon around this time next year. So the, the blended whiskey is a product that took just as much time and passion to create uh, and sourcing and figuring out that, that high-end, you know, kind of experience. And uh, that's that's the product that we've been winning a bunch of awards on. It's a blended product right now. So I'm excited for our own to come out for next year. So what you're going to expect from this it is, um, again, 118.5 proof. It is a rye-heavy mash bill, so a high rye mash bill. Um, it's sweet up front, uh, and then it hits you with that rye and that pepper, uh, you know, that rye spice on the back end. Um, it's it's one of those that I just really enjoy. I, I love when you can get both. You know, sometimes you have like a bourbons that are just super sweet. Sometimes you have bourbons that are super spicy. This hits you with both, and that's my favorite type of, of bourbons. Uh, is one that you can take that whole ride with. It is at least four years old. Um, they they do all the blending again at source and they, they blend it there uh, in Columbus at High Bank Distillery um, use, utilizing three different mash bills. The best part about this, the, despite the fact that it's delicious, obviously, the best part about this is the price. So is this runs in at about fifty bucks, uh, and for fifty dollars to get a um, barrel proof. Um, expression is just you know it, it's it, it really is a great price point for what you get in this bottle buy it you won't be disappointed all right and we've made it coming in at number one on my list we're going back to Middle West spirits so we're still in Columbus Ohio going back to Middle West spirits and we're going to their double cast collection um, this is a special these are special releases from Middle West um, so they're not always available. However, um, I've, 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 it's not super hard to get, at least here in Ohio. Um, there are actually three. I own two of the, of the three bottles. Um, uh, the one that I'm going to talk about in particular is the um, Ported Pumpernickel Rye Whiskey. So this is their Dark Pumpernickel Rye. That they that's five years old, um, and it's aged in French tawny pork casks. Um, it is so good. Um, it's ninety nine point five proof, but let me tell you, at ninety nine point five proof, if I if I were to drink this blind, and this is what I have in my glass right here, if I were to drink this blind, I I honestly would probably put this at like one hundred and fifteen proof. It, it, it drinks a lot hotter than it is. Uh, that might be a turn off to some, to me. I think that's kind of exciting. But it is everything that you want in a rye whiskey and in, uh, in a whiskey in, in particular. It, it's really spicy and peppery, um, but it's, it's you, that rye hits you but then it's like really like subtle and um, it's just got this subtle sweetness that comes off of that spiciness that just makes you want to keep keep drinking it. Um, recently, I um, have had the pleasure of being able to try um, last year's Thomas H. Handy from the BTAC Buffalo Trace Antique Collection and I'm not saying that this tastes just like that, but this tastes really close to, to that. Uh, and that's, so that's a super premium, uh, hard to get rye. Uh, and I put this right in that same category. It, it's just so good, it's so delicious. It's really creamy um, and, and uh, just kind of viscous. Um, and, and just that, wine port wine finish comes through so much i think that's where that sweetness comes in off of that off of that spiciness and it's just again something that you can sit around uh, and enjoy with your friends and, and kind of everybody's going to pick up a little bit something a little bit different yeah it's just got so much flavor so much going on uh, it's really delicious uh, i can't recommend this enough 
This other bottle I have here, I haven't opened yet. Um, this is their Oloroso Wheat Whiskey. So this is their wheat whiskey that is five years old and then it is double aged in Spanish Oloroso Sherry casks. I haven't opened it yet. It's got, I'm gonna be reviewing it soon. Uh, I can't imagine I'm not gonna like it. Uh, I love sherry finished whiskeys. Uh, and that wheat whiskey that they, they put out is so good um, that I imagine that th this is probably going to be super sweet. But check back to the channel because I'll be reviewing this soon. Shout out to w one of my good friends, uh, Hoy. He actually bought this for me for my for my birthday recently. Uh, and I mean, what a guy, right? Uh, thank you so much, Hoy. Can't wait to dig into this. All right, so there's my list. There is my top five whiskeys from the state of Ohio. Tell me what you think if you live in Ohio. Is there anything that I missed? What what would you put on this list that I didn't put on this list? Or is there anything that I put on this list that I should take off? What do you think? Um, again, Ohio is doing some great things with whiskey and bourbon in general. So if you if you're not familiar with Ohio whiskeys, please 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 check it out. Um, and if you're ever in Ohio and you make it up to Tiffin uh, or somewhere in the area, drop me a line and uh, maybe I'll meet up with you. Uh, at, at our local bourbon bar, the Renaissance of Tiffin, and, and we can uh, we can have a drink. And if you want to go visit me, come on over to Tiffin. <laughs> Tiffin. So, thanks for watching. Cheers. Um, if you are another whiskey tuber out there and your state hasn't been covered yet, um, Phil and Julie, uh, I, I think, are totally fine with opening this up to anyone, any whiskey tubers in any state. So uh, I know my friends Derek and Nick at Keeping It Neat. I don't think Massachusetts. I think that's where you're at. <laughs> I don't. I know. You, I know it's up there in the New England states. Uh, but I don't think that state's been covered yet. So I'm going to challenge you to 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 let us know what's good coming out of there. Uh, and again, any of my other whiskey tuber friends that uh, their state hasn't been covered yet. Um, uh, I'd love to see you put out some videos. So, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Please uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, um, all that fun stuff. And you can follow Max and myself on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Bourbon and the Baby on all those platforms. And uh, check out in the link in the description below for our shop on Spreadshirt. Cheers.